certainties in uncertain times. Heavenly Father, we pray for a message that comes from your heart. A message that you will enable us to decode, to understand, to apply in our lives. May you still and quiet us, O God, so we may hear your voice. May you make our hearts fertile grounds for your word. And may your word stay root, bear fruits in our lives. Be our speaker, Father. We ask you to speak to us so we may be corrected, we may be comforted, we may be reassured. Hinihiling namin, Panginoon, na kayo po magsalita. Ituwid niyo po kami. Turuan niyo po kami. At kami patuloy naman na umaasa. Na kami tuturuan ninyo upang matahak ang maraming mga silimot na landa sa buhay na ito. Lord, we commit this whole gathering to you. We have gathered to hear your voice, speak to your people, lead us unto greater godliness. We seek you with confidence in Jesus' mighty name. Certainties in uncertain times. Ano po ba yung mga uncertainties in life? What are uncertainties in life? Meron nga ba nun? James 4, 13 to 14. Now listen, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city. Spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Parang nakaka... Panlumo naman itong ganitong kahulugan ng buhay. Sabi, hindi mo daw pwedeng sabihin na today, tomorrow, we will go there, we will make money, we will do this and that. Ni hindi daw natin alam kung ano mangyayari bukas, nandiyan pa ba tayo o hindi. At sabi, ano ba ang buhay? Para lang tayong usok, para lang tayong vapor, para lang tayong mist, parang fog that goes with the first streak of sunlight. Here today, gone tomorrow. What are uncertainties in life? One uncertainty may be classified as universal. A universal uncertainty. And under that, we might consider natural uncertainty. Some of them celestial, some terrestrial, some here on this planet, some in a planet far away. Maraming uncertainties. People are very seriously worried about global warming, for instance. Sinasabi nila, nabutas na daw yung atmosphere, pumapasok na yung mga heat waves dito sa ating atmosphere. Natutunan na daw mga yelo sa North and South Pole. At pag nangyari yun, lulubog ang maraming coastal towns and cities. Ano na mangyayari sa mundo? There's pollution that seems to go unabated. Only very few enlightened civilizations are doing something serious about pollution. So you might think, saan ito pupunta? Kung kayo mahilig magbiyahe kahit dito sa ating bayan in the last 20, 30 years, nakikita nyo na lahat ng towns are creeping, creeping, creeping. Mamaya, town A and town B, magtatagpo na sila, mawawala na yung bukid sa gitna. Ano na mangyayari sa atin? Everywhere, tao. Tao, tao. And people are worried about dwindling water supply. Sa amin nga sa Pio del Pilar, walang tubig ngayon eh. Yung lahat ng under the Manila water company ay walang tubig. Huwag na tayong lumayo pa. Habang natutunaw yung North and South Pole, wala namang tubig. At ang sinasabi pa nila, the next world wars may be fought over water supplies. So parang nakakatakot yata yan. At mga bulkano, isa lang ang pumutok. Mount Pinatubo was enough to bring down the temperature of the planet one or two degrees lower. Isa lang yun. And the Philippines has more or less 28 active volcanoes. Pag nagsabay-sabay yun, Pilipinas pa lang. Eh yung mga iba pa sa tinatawag nilang ring of fire hanggang sa uh, western seaboard ng mga Amerikas, hanggang dito sa East Asia. Paano na yun? So natural uncertainties. Meron pa, hindi na natural, social. Mga man-made uncertainties. Relationships. Yung mag-asawa ngayon, nakakatiyak ba kayong kayo pa bukas? Sabi niyo ba, ay salamat, sana nga matapos na. Pero kumisan na, yung isa na ninervyos, nandiyan pa ba siya? Relationships come and go. Masyado nga yung transient ang mga relasyon. Wala nang nagsasabi ng I love you, mga trip na lang kita. Para konti na lang ang commitment. Because people expect that it will not last. Parang pardon me for saying I love you. Mga nag apologize pa ngayon, yung mga ganyan. May mga prenuptial arrangements. Hindi pa ikinakasal, ina-arrange sa pag naghiwalay tayo, yung pera ko, akin lang ah. So talagang walang balak magtagal. 
Relationships can be so uncertain. Political uncertainties are also in our midst. Ang mga biro nga naman ng mga tandahana. Kita nyo mga exchange baskets ng mga Aquino at Marcos, ng mga Estrada at mga Arroyo. Parang sa isang iglap, napapalitan ng lahat, nare-rearrange ang lahat, nare-reconfigure ang lahat-lahat sa buhay. Last year, last November, I visited our churches in the Americas. Tapos yung mga isang kaibigan ko doon sabi, magstay ka na kasi alis ako November 6 eh. November 7, presidential election namin. Kasi citizen na siya doon, so namin na. Sabi, sabi ko, ayun yung tagal niya. Sabi, hindi, isang araw lang yan, tapos. Dito ka, makita mo kung gano'ng kabilis ang electoral process dito sa Amerika. Buti na lang, hindi pinagpilita kong umalis kasi tagal, 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 tagal bago nagkaroon ng presidente yung Amerika. Alam nyo kung gano'ng karaming gulo ang nangyari. So, maraming uncertainties ang politics also. And yet, there are also economic uncertainties. Na mayaman ka ngayon, hindi nakakatiyak kung mayaman ka pa bukas. Mahirap ka ngayon, hindi walang kung mahirap ka pa rin bukas. Ang dami-daming mga bagay na hindi natin tiyak. So these are universal. Meron din naman very personal uncertainties. Health. Sometimes it's so volatile. Very healthy ka ngayon. Kasi lang pala hindi mo alam. All you need is one city scan. Tapos ganun pala, gumuho ang mundo. Wealth can be so uncertain. Relationships, social standing, and even moral standing. Pati yung mga akala mo ang tibay-tibay ngayon morally, biglang natutumba pala kinabukasan. Sabi sa Psalm 31, 13, there is terror in every side. And it may be true in the lives of some of us. Life can be filled with terror. Nakakatakot naman yata ang buhay. Let's talk about the brighter side of life. Let's talk about certainties in life. What are the certainties that can steady us, that can give us anchorage in uncertain times? And we're going to talk only about three certainties. And they should be more than enough to make all of us smile as we leave this hall today. One certainty in life that you can hold on to is God. God is certain. Hindi siya nagbabago. Hindi siya naiiba. Hindi siya nawawala. Psalm 31, 14. By I, but I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. James 1, 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Thank God He doesn't change. Nagpapalit-palit man ang mga seasons. Nagpapalit-palit ang mga bagay na hindi dapat at inaasahang nagpapalit. But God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And that should be enough to give us anchorage. What is it about God that can make us so secure? God's person, God's being is certain. In His personality, three qualities, three qualities strike us. And one of that is God's omnipresence. That God is everywhere, every time. Jeremiah 23, 24. Can anyone hide in secret places so I cannot see him? Declares the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth? Declares the Lord. Wonderful. Misa nakakatakot din kasi wala ka mapaglihiman ng kasalanan. Wala ka mapuntahan na sikreto talaga kay madilim o maliwanag. But it's also very reassuring na wala tayong pwedeng puntahan na hindi naroon ang Diyos. Na hindi niya kaya tayo kayang iprotect. Tulungan, hanguin sa ating mga hirap. Bigyan ng guidance, ng light, ng strength. God is everywhere, every time. That is certain. What else about God is certain? God's omniscience. That He is all-knowing. That He knows everything. Psalm 38, 9. All my longings lie open before you, O Lord. My sighing is not hidden from you. Once more, it can work on the reverse. Kung gumagawa tayo ng masasamang bagay, bad news that God is omniscient. Pero lahat naman ng ating hirap, lahat ng ating kabutihan, lahat ng ating mga ginagawa, salamat alam ng Diyos. Mas kilala pa nga niya tayo kaysa kilala natin ang ating sarili. Kaya may mga bagay na ipinagpipray tayo, ang sagot ni Lord, no, sumasama ang loob natin, pero actually dapat tayo magpasalamat because He knows us more than we know ourselves. He knows what's good for us. Salamat alam niya ang lahat. 
At dahil doon, walang naililihim sa kanya, pati masasamang tao. Pati gumagawa sa atin ng masama, gumawa at gagawa pa ng masama, alam pa rin ng Diyos. Kaya niya tayo ipagtanggol, kaya niya tayong bigyan ng katarungan, kaya niya tayong bigyan ng protection. Because God is omniscient. Matagal na niyang alam kung matutunaw man o hindi ang North and South Pole. Alam niya kung kailan puputok ang mga bulkan. Alam niya kung ano mangyayari sa kanyang nilikha. Therefore, hindi na siya masusurprise. God knows. What else is certain about God? God's omnipotence. That He is all-powerful. Matthew 10.29 Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet, not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your Father. Sabi mo, hindi ba yung mga maya, yung mga ibong maliliit na yan, dalawasang pera lang, ang mura-mura, pwede mo nang hindi bayaran, pero walang nalalaglag sa lupa na hindi pinapayagan ng ating Ama sa langit. Ibig sabihin, hanggang sa maliliit na bagay at sa kinoconsider nating maliliit na mga pangyayari, nangyayari pa rin sa Kanyang pagbigay ng permiso. That apart from His permission, apart from His will, nothing happens in creation. Very reassuring that God is omnipotent. Eko yung maliliit na bagay ay under His control, lalo pa yung malalaki. Kaya tayo nagkakaroon ng assurance na kung pinapayagan niya ang isang bagay na mangyari at dahil alam niya ang lahat at siya marunong, therefore tama ito at ito'y mabuti. Kahit sa biglang tingin at sa ating limitadong pananaw, parang hindi ito ang gusto ng ating selfish interest. We can trust God. If God is ever present, if God is ever knowing, if God is ever powerful, then His people have certain security. And this is something to celebrate about. Security is certain for God's people. Hindi dapat nai-insecure ang mga anak ng Diyos. Hindi dapat nagugulumihanan, nangangamba, natatakot. Dahil ang Diyos ay narot na karating na sa hinaharap pa lamang. Walang lingid sa Kanya at walang hindi siya kaya. Therefore, God's people are secure. Matthew 6, 25 up to 32. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, than the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet, your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. How reassuring. Sabi, nakikita niyo yung mga damo. Kahit hindi sila nagwi-weave ng tela, hindi sila nananahi. Kahit si Solomon, sa kanyang karangyaan, hindi nakapagdamit tulad ng gaganda ng mga bihis ng mga damong ito, ng mga bulaklak na ito. At kung ang mga damong ito ay narito ngayon tuyo na bukas at sisilaban na sa apoy, kayo pa kaya ang hindi damta ng Diyos? At ang mga ibon na hindi nagtatanim, hindi nagkagapas, hindi nagkaharvest, hindi nag-iipo ng mga grains in granaries, the Father feeds them. Will He not much more feed you? The highest creation of God, created in God's image, for whose salvation? The Son of God died. Sabi, kayo pa kaya ang hindi pa kainin? Kayo pa kaya ang hindi bihisan? Kayo pa kaya ang kalimutan ng Diyos? Kung yung mga lesser creation ay kanyang inaalala. Hindi naman po sinasabi ng Matthew 6, 25 to 32, na huwag na tayo mag-alala kung ano nga isusuot o kung ano kakainin. Ang sinasabi, huwag itong lubos na alalahanin to the point that you get the focus on God, you get the focus on faith, and you're only crippled by lack of faith and by fear. Siyempre, iniisip mo rin, ano kaya magandang coordinate si susuot ko ngayon? Ano kaya magandang terno? Hindi naman masamang iniisip ang ganyang bagay. Ano kaya ipapaluto ko ngayon? Adobo ba o kare-kare o ano ba? Ang point is, hindi lubos na pinag-iisip at pinangangambahan na dumadating tuloy sa punto na takot lang ang umuuwi sa atin. 
takot na mawalan, takot na maghirap, takot na mamatay, takot na magkasakit. Sabi niya, alam ng Diyos lahat yan. At kung mahal niyo ang inyong sarili, mas mahal kayo ng Diyos kaysa mahal niyo ang sarili niyo. Marami nga tayong ginagawang mga activities, self-destructive pa. Sa mata lang ang Diyos, walang gagawin to destroy us. God loves us more than we love ourselves. So we can entrust our well-being into the hands of this wonderful God. Hindi inibig sabihin na maging careless tayo and thoughtless about the details of our lives. But what the verses are saying is, do not exaggerate the need more than the solution. Do not focus on what is lacking. Focus on God. Because God will supply all our needs. So that is one thing nice about God. His person. What else? God's Word. God's Word is certain. God's Word is wonderful. Matthew 24, 35. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. So merong certain. May nagbabago. Kahit may mga marriage contract na hindi in-honor ng iba, may mga iba pang contract sa tinatakbuhan, may mga salita at pangakong sinisira, merong mga salitang pwede tayong panghawakan ang salita ng Diyos. The words of God will never pass away. What was right then is right now and will be right tomorrow. What was wrong then is wrong now and will be wrong tomorrow. Walang bagong morality. There has always been just one morality. Kaya hindi nagbabago, pwedeng asahan, pwede tayong gumawa ng mga pangarap at mga plano around God's Word because God's Word does not change. And one of that is that we can have guidance. Guidance from God's Word. Psalm 32.8, the Lord says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Napakagandang pangako. Nasa salita ng Diyos, makakakawa tayo ng instruction and teaching. Makakita tayo ng guidance, counsel, so that we may not go wrong. And we may do what is right. Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. How important, especially in this dark world, that the word of God is a lamp unto our feet. Malalaman natin kung saan tayo dapat humakbang, saan dapat lumiko, tataas ba o bababa, meron ba mga patibong o wala, we will know. Because the word of God is a lamp unto our feet. Thank God that His word does not change. Hindi yung mga, Lord, pangako niyo po sa akin, ay, teka, teka, I changed my mind na on that, na iba na yan, na-revise. Nakakatakot naman ko, lagi nire-revise. Pero buti na lang, permanente. Kaya nga, ninumberan pa yung Bible. Sabi nila, ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 1.20? Ano ba yan? Ninumberan lahat ng mga books, ninumberan ng mga chapters, ninumberan ng mga sentences. Una, para walang makapagdagdag. Pangalawa, para walang makapagbawas. At pangatlo, para madaling hanapin yung kailangan natin. Protected pa. Napakahalaga na sinasaulo, ipinapamuhay, inuunawa ang salita ng Diyos kasi doon tayo kumukuha ng guidance. Alin ang pwedeng gawin, alin ang hindi. Alin ang marapat gawin ngayon at later. Kailan dapat kumilos. Napaka-importante. And God's Word gives us guidance. The unchanging Word also gives promises. Wonderful, wonderful promises. Psalm 119, verse 140. Your promises have been thoroughly tested and your servant loves them. Ang sarap ng mga pangako ng Diyos. Gano'n po karaming pangako ng Diyos ang memorize nyo? Napaka-importante i-memorize. Para yung mga anak natin, pag sabing di ba, sabi nyo, pag Sunday, ipapasyal ako o sa ganung araw may gagawin, then maalala mo, oo nga. But of course, God doesn't forget His promises. But the promises are given not for His sake, but for our sake. So we don't forget God's promises. Marami mga tao nang lilupay-pay, nangihina, nahihirapan dahil nalilimutan nila ang mga pangako ng Diyos. Kumisan hindi nalilimutan, hindi alam ang pangako ng Diyos. Yung marami may pangako na sa ganitong area of life, tapos ay insecure tayo kasi hindi natin alam na may pangako. Kaya dapat itago ang salita ng Diyos sa ating puso. Sabi ng sumulat ng Psalm, Your words I hid in my heart 
that I may not sin against you. Ano yung sin? Sin of doing something wrong and also sin of doubting. Sin of being excessively afraid. Because God doesn't want us to be afraid. At pag alam natin yung mga pangako niya, alam natin hindi siya nagbabago, hindi siya nagbabago ng isip, we can be the most secure beings on earth. God's promises. What else about God's word? Stead is us, God's plans. God has a wonderful plan for you and me. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. May plano para sa atin ang Diyos. At sabi ng Diyos, alam ko kung anong plano ko para sa inyo. Plano para kayo ay umasenso, sumagana. Hindi para kayo saktan, kundi bigyan kayo ng pag-asa at bigyan kayo ng kinabukasan. God has a plan for us. God knows those plans. God doesn't change His mind. God knows everything. Therefore, we are secure. So God is certain. Sabi ko kanina, tatlong pag-uusapan natin na certainties in life. God is certain. That's number one. Number two, fasten your seatbelts. Ang number two, certain, death. Mamamatay tayong lahat. Salamat na lang. Kung ayaw nyo pa, siguro kung 212 years old na kayo, so yung kamatayan, kamatayan, ha, hali ka na. Diba? Nagaharap ka na rin. Alam niyo, masarap lang naman yung buhay kung malusog ka at maginhawa at lahat. But because of man's fallen nature, there will come a time when death becomes a welcome respite, a welcome rest, a welcome entry into something nice. Yung body nag-degenerate kasi nung nagkasala sa Eden at si Eva at tayo ay nagkasala rin. We were designed to be around for long. But what happens? When you're above 35, sino sa inyo mga above 35? Hindi IQ, ha, edad? Above 35. Kano, kapatingin nga ng mga kamay nyo, sige na, o, oh, above 35, thank you, you're over the hill. Talaga naman. Misa nga, 20 anos ka palang, lumalabo na yung mata. Lumulutong na ang mga buto. Ayaw na tayong lumaki. Papaliit na. Ano pa nangyayari? Lumadating na lahat yung mga naiipon ng mga gallstones, mga lahat. Talagang hindi designed to last. Salamat na lang, merong eternal life. Salamat na lang, merong death. Kasi kung hindi, at sa lagay, sumabog na yung ating abdo, nandiyan na lahat ang mga gallstones natin, hindi tayo makakita sa dami ng mga katarata, nakalbo na tayo lahat, lumid na tayo, tapos buhay ka pa. Salamat na lang, at may wakas ito. Amoy lupa ka na. Tinutubuan na na kung ano-ano, tapos buhay pa. Thank God, there is death. Can you say that? Yes, because death is the door, the entry point to eternal life in the Lord. Hindi kinakatakutan yan. Ang dapat lang matakot sa mga mamamata- sa kamatayan ay yung hindi ligtas, yung walang Panginoon, yung walang tagapagligtas. Because those who are in Christ, to die is gain. Pero siyempre, gusto na muna muna nating mag to live is Christ. Saka na yung to die is again. Pero kung sakaling darating, salamat din. Sapagkat nakakaroon tayo ng bagong buhay. Sabi ni Lord na sa kriminal na mamamatay sa krus, Today, you will be with me in paradise. Wala na siguro ang kasing tamis marinig. Kung nakapako ang inyong mga kamay at paa, dislocated ang inyong mga joints, Nag-aapoy kayo ng lagnat under the fierce sun over the Middle East desert. Napakasarap marinig na matatapos din yun. At hindi lang pupunta sa kung saan, in paradise. Genesis 3.19 By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you will return. The certainty of death should steady us. Dahil alam nating may kamatayan, dapat malinaw sa atin kung bakit tayo nabubuhay para pag dumating yung kamatayan, hindi tayo nalilito kung bakit dumarating yon. At hindi tayo hingi ng hingi ng extension. Kasi 
Nagampanan natin ang dapat gampanan, nagawa ang dapat gawin, nalaman ang dapat malaman, nakapaglingkod ng tama, nakapamuhay ng ayon sa kalooban ng Diyos, then welcome death. Bakit yung iba kung mabuhay, parang hindi nila alam na may kamatayan? Akala mo mabubuhay forever. Hindi binibigyan ng, ng puwang sa oras nila yung kanilang espiritu, yung kanilang relasyon sa Diyos. Hindi nakikipagtama ng relasyon sa tao. Tapos biglang namatay yung nanay, hindi na nagawa ng mabuti, iiyak-iyak. O kaya namatay yung asawa, hindi nagawa ng mabuti, nagsisisi. O namatay yung kunsino, kaibigan o yung anak. Alam natin na mayroong death. And because we know that, we should be guided how to live. Na hindi tayo nagkakimkim ng sama ng loob sa kapwa, nagpapatawad tayo, pinapatawad natin sila, humihingi tayo ng tawad sa kanila dahil baka sila yung biglang mamatay, hindi tayo napatawad, masama ang ating loob, hindi tayo nang lalamang dahil baka mamaya mamatay sila, magsisi tayo, o tayo bigla yung mamatay, may iniwan tayong mga kasamaan sa mundo. Alam naman natin mamamatay tayo eh. Kaya dapat yung pamumuhay natin nagkakaroon ng panuntunan, kakaroon tayo ng standard, what to do, what not to do. Alam kong pwede ako mamatay any moment, so bakit ako matutulog ng may kasalanan? Di dapat nagko-confess ako. Alam kong death can come any moment, so bakit ako magkikip ng affair? Eh sa kalagit na anong affair na yun, kung kamatayan ko pa, hindi ko na naitama ang aking buhay. Alam kong haharap ako sa Diyos, ba't hindi ako maglingkod sa Kanya ngayon? Alam kong lilipat ako doon sa kabilang buhay, bakit hindi ako doon magpunta ng kayamanan, bakit puro dito na lang? Alam naman natin, and God enables us to know so that we may be ready. Not that we may be taken by surprise when it happens. So death is certain. That is sure. That should steady us. That should guide us in how to live. Pangatlong certainty. There is justice. God is a God of justice. Psalm 9.8 He will judge the world in righteousness. He will govern the peoples with justice. So anong certain, mga kapatid? There will be judgment. Hebrews 9.27, Just as man is destined to die once, and after that, to face judgment. May judgment. Dapat handa tayo doon. Hindi yung surprise. Hindi nakakabigla. Matagal lang sinabi. And there is eternal life. Matthew 25.46, Then they will go away to eternal punishment, those who are not saved. But the righteous to eternal life. You and I know what righteous means. It doesn't mean 100% moral uprightness. Nobody is righteous. But righteousness, as far as the Bible is concerned, is when you accept Jesus as Savior and Lord, when you charge to Him your sins, and you are cleansed by His blood, then you become righteous by faith. By believing in Jesus, you become righteous. You are made righteous. You are considered righteous. Not because we actually are righteous, but our faith in Jesus makes us righteous. And the righteous people have rewards. Meron pang rewards. That's why it is so comforting. First Samuel 26, 23, The Lord rewards every man for his righteousness and faithfulness. Church, most people's uncertainties, most people's apprehensions, most people's fears come from materialism. Marami tayong takot dahil sa ating pagiging materialistic. Una, yung body, natatakot tayong magkasakit ito, natatakot ang pumangit ito, natatakot na magkaroon ng mga wrinkles ito because sobra tayong obsessed with the body more than the soul inside which is housed in that body. Natatakot tayong maghirap, mawala ng pera, natatakot tayong mawala ng bahay, mawala ng ito. Puro yun. Puro. Mga fear ng tao, kadalasan materialistic in nature. Yung bang ang attitude is this timeness versus eternal timeness. Puro ito lang ang iniisip na insecure tuloy. This lifeness more than next lifeness. Iniimbento ko lang yung word, of course. And worldliness more than spirituality. Sabi sa Matthew 6, 19 to 21, and I am encouraging you to have a second reading of this mostly misunderstood cluster of verses. Matthew 6, 19 to 21. Do not store up for yourselves treasures. Where? On earth. 
where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures where? In heaven. Where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Tama nga naman. Sabi, mag-ipon kayo ng kayamanan dun sa langit. Walang nakakapagnakaw, walang nabubulok. Kesa dito sa lupa, nabubulok na nanakaw. Kasi kung nasa ng kayamanan nyo, nandun ang puso nyo. So kung kayamanan mo ay nasa material things lamang, ang puso mo nandun lamang, Therefore, dapat ka nga laging matakot. Kasi pwedeng manakaw yan eh. Pwedeng mabulok, pwedeng magdepreciate, pwedeng maiba. Nakakatakot. First reading of this chapter says, Do good on earth and earn rewards in heaven. Do not value the physical above the spiritual. Sapagkat kung ang lagi nating binavalue, yung narito lang, lagi tayo may insecure. But we value what is eternal, then we will be secure. Kahit nga si Paul, eh, tumatanda na siya. Sabi niya, even outwardly, we look like we are deteriorating. We are being renewed inside in a wonderful way. Because Paul was concentrating on the spirit more than on the body. On the spiritual more than on the physical. Napagka nag-uusap ng wealth, hindi lang material. Magkanong pera mo sa banko, gano'ng kalaki ang bahay mo, ilang square meter ang binili mong lote, kundi... Ilang kaluluwa na nadala mo kay Lord? Ano mga righteousnesses na ang nagawa mo at na-conquer ng mga sins in your life by God's grace? Gano karami na ba ang nasheran mo ng gospel? Ilang verses ba ang nagiging totoo sa iyong buhay? Yung wealth na yun. Sabi, pag yun ang kinonsider mo na wealth, yung relasyon mo sa Diyos, yung alam mo, yung ginagamit mo, yung paglilingkod mo, secure ka. Kasi yung wealth mo nasa heaven, walang nakakanakaw. Kasi yung wealth mo narito lang sa earth. Alam niyo, the fastest way to be insecure, sabi nila, is to fall in love with a ravishingly good-looking person. Kasi ang dami mong kaagaw. Na kahit sumusumpa-sumpa sa yung iniibig ka niya, ikay susunod-sunod din dahil baka masaklot ng iba. Kasi, eto, mahalaga sa akin, naaagaw. Pero yung mga ipinupunta natin sa heaven, hindi naaagaw. Good deeds, righteousness, service, our sacrifices, our obedience, our gifts to the poor, our services to God, our services to the church of the Lord, walang nakakaagaw nun. Yun ang mga treasures in heaven. At sinabi ni Lord, pag yan ang inuna ninyo, magkakaroon kayo ng security. Magiging certain ang lahat. At pagkatapos sabi niya, yun din ang ibang gusto niyo, clothes, etc., etc., will be added to you. Pero oras na inuna niyo yung mga etc. lang, you are standing on very loose ground. You're standing on sand, on shifting sand, which will not hold up when things go wrong. So stand on solid ground, stand on spiritual matter. Make spiritual things your primary wealth. Although you are not being stopped from making material wealth also, but make spiritual wealth primary. Do not stand on uncertainty, on that which is material or worldly, but stand on that which is spiritual. Certainty, security, is in Christ. In fact, may I add, the word alone. Certainty, security, is in Christ alone. Romans 8, 31-39 What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, 
We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In other words, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. No demon nor angel, no height nor depth, no fullness nor nothingness, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. That church is certain. That is certain. And that's the word of God that doesn't change. Let's bow before the Lord and consider What uncertainties can you be afraid of? What lies are being offered to you by the devil to make you feel insecure? Ano sinasam niya, hindi ka sure dito, hindi ka sure doon, therefore you should be worried, you should be afraid. What can be your fears? Consider them. Excess baggage, and you must get rid of them. Let's bring our hearts to the Lord for examination. And if there are uncertainties that scare us, don't leave this hall today without surrendering those uncertainties to the Lord. The Lord says, I care for you. Cast all your cares. Cast all your burdens upon me. Because I care for you. And God doesn't want us to be afraid. He has conquered the world. He has conquered even death. If death has been conquered, what else can win? It's a matter of trusting the Lord. So in silence, if there's any uncertainty that has been scaring you lately, consider this as something you must surrender to the Lord. Isuko natin sa Panginoon ang ating mga agam-agam, nakinatatakutan mga possibilities, mga X-factors, everything is in the hand of God. I like to pray. I like to pray. Pray for people who are seeking the Lord's certainty. Kung meron kayo mga uncertainties in life that bother you, that scare you, I'm inviting you to stand up and offer them to the Lord. At papalitan niya ito ng comfort. Papalitan niya ng assurance. We have feasted on God's words. They say God is omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. That His words are full of promises. Promises that never change. That nothing can separate you from the love of God. But if you are looking at your problems and concerns and worries too much, They are attempting to separate you from God. And if you have fears, then you are being separated from the peace of the Lord. And it's time to go back to the Lord's peace. Sino man po, ang may mga pangamba, na ito'y lumalaki na, naaalala natin lagi, nakaka-apekto sa atin. And you want to say now, Lord Jesus, I like to bring this burden to you. I like to give my concerns and these uncertainties and doubts and fears to you. You stand up. The Lord is here. You recognize that you need the Lord. Bring this at the feet of Jesus. And he will set you free. Jesus is truth. And the truth sets free. Panginoon, kayong nakababatid ng lahat. Laman ang puso ng bawat isa ay alam nyo. Ang aming mga nakaraan ngayon at bukas. Ang aming mga pangamba. Ang aming mga gunigunit mga ini-imagine. Alam nyo rin. Panginoon, Hinihiling ko. Alang-alang sa dugo ni Jesus na natigis para sa kaligtasan ng mga anak niyo. Pawiin niyo po ang mga pangamba. Tanging kayo lang makagagawa nito. We cannot even dare to tell you how to do it, God. You have infinite ways. You have powerful ways. And your ways are higher than ours. So take over, O God. Do whatever it takes. 
nang aming maalala na hindi kami dapat mangamba. We don't know what the future hold, but we know that you hold the future. Therefore, we can be secure. Ipatawad mo ang aming mga pagdududa, mga panahon ng pag-aalinlangan na kami nagpadala sa aming mga takot at maaring gumawa pa ng mga mali para lamang sagutin ang mga takot na yun. At ngayon, Panginoon, hanguin niyo ang iyong mga anak. Nawa ang iyong mapagpalang kamay ay dumampi sa aming mga buhay. At lalo namin kayong makilala. Kayo na Diyos ng mga Diyos. Hari ng mga hari ay nagmamahal sa amin. Lord, lift up the gloom, lift up the doubts, lift out the fears because of the uncertain and make us focus on what is certain. And you and your word are certain. We thank you that you are. Panginoon, may you honor and dignify this gesture of your people to stand before you in your infinitely merciful ways. May you answer our questions. Fill our needs and liberate us. People of God, receive the healing, the reassuring touch of the Lord. And as you believe, may it be done unto you. We praise you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name.